Lenore, you talk about four steps to create a, uh, a diverse and inclusive environment. What are, what are the four steps? Mm -hmm. And um, let's see, I think it's four or five, but anyway, okay. it's the easy way to remember it is as a mnemonic, be basic. Okay. So B simply stands for breathe. Okay. Now, don't sigh in the person's face. <laughs> 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 but what, what happens is when we're interacting with someone different or somebody says something that might be offensive or, you know, whatever it can be, when you start getting that knot in your stomach or behind your neck, wherever it is you carry your tension, that's an emotional indicator that your body's uncomfortable, yet you have to interact with this person. Right. So to help yourself not go directly to your stereotypical thoughts. What you want to do first is breathe, literally inhale, so that you can feed oxygen to your brain because it'll go to the part of your brain that's called the slow brain. It'll get you to slow down, get out of your emotions. Okay. Now, and it's a fast thing, you know, I mean, we're sure. not talking about going to a whole deep meditation. <laughs> and then the next B stands for be the other, meaning be willing to go to a place where you're the one who is different. Hmm. So in North okay. America, 11 o'clock on Sunday morning is the most segregated time of the week. So if you happen to go to a place of worship, go to a different one, whether it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whenever it is you worship, but go someplace different. Go someplace not part of your religion. So if you're Christian, you know maybe you go to a Jewish synagogue. Surely you have a Jewish friend that could take you and so so you know right. I'm not saying go by yourself if that's a little too unnerving um, You're too afraid you're gonna make a mistake, but be willing to go someplace else so that you can explore The ways that that group is different than you and oh by the way you'll be learning about them now I'm not suggesting this just Religious based I mean sure. you could go to if you're not Greek go to a Greek festival eat some of the food but not just eating the food is not enough, but you know, interact so with people. Good. I know, I know. Um, you know, so do some of those things. Get outside of your comfort zone and be willing to do it beyond work because you know, you'll have some diversity at work, but do it beyond work. Be the other, because what will happen is when you realize you're the only one, whatever it is, your stereotypes about the group that you're now with will come to the forefront and you'll realize that's all they are that you're with human beings just like anybody else. Sure. So, so it's breathe, be the other, then it's A, ask for feedback. If you're serious about wanting to create a more inclusive environment and wanting to disrupt your biases so that you don't act on them, those biases that give you a negative result, then be willing to get feedback. Feedback from your team members, you know, to make it a group project. Everybody identifies, they don't have to identify to the whole group, but just to one person, you know, I think, I know I have a bias about X, Y. I need you to point out to me if I say or do something that, that perpetuates that bias because it's unconscious to me what I'm doing and I want to make it conscious so I can change my actions. So I'll give you an example. In our country, people tend to think that the safe stereotype is around weight. We make jokes about fat people. We call Joe Big Joe when he never said that was his name. Um, and so if you decide you want to get beyond your bias about weight, then you need, to ha you need to tell someone that so that they can be willing to give you some feedback. Don't throw you under the bus in the middle of you know, a situation, right. but give you some feedback. So ask for feedback and be willing to listen. Don't get defensive, but really listen. Then the S stands for suspend judgment. We're going to judge people. We can't not judge people. So don't beat yourself up about it, but be willing to suspend it. So when I met you for the first time, long time ago, I would have had some judgment. I don't even know what it is now because I know you as a person, but I would have had some judgment. If I were to suspend that to say, well, hmm, Chuck, I don't know, you know, he, wears black turtlenecks all the time and he's got gray hair and I make up some stuff, then just suspend that. Yes, that may be true about you, but that doesn't tell me who you really are. So suspend whatever that judgment is. 
Um, one example that I use in my, um, in my keynotes as well as my workshops is I'll have people shake hands with one another. And then I'll say, okay, now I'm going to change the circumstance and I need you to shake hands again. So in the second one, I say, give your partner a dead fish handshake, a really limp handshake. And it's amazing to watch folks. They're like, oh my gosh, I don't even want to touch. They've already shaken hands, right? But now they don't, know, don't even want to touch each other, which is a, a very visceral um, illustration of how much bias we have around what a correct handshake is. And so what I say to folks is, so when you shake somebody's hand who has a, by your standards, a weak handshake, suspend that judgment. Because your brain goes to, that's not a leader, they're hiding something, they're not confident. You don't know if any of that is true. Suspend it. Be willing to get to know that person, ask them some questions, especially in an interview situation, to see if you're right or not. And what you want to do is work at trying to make yourself wrong. Because a handshake is important enough that if the person wasn't doing it in a way that's going to work for them in that job, you could teach them how to do it. A different way. Interesting. Okay. So that's suspend judgment. Then I is invite others. Invite others. And what that means is you need to think about who's in my space? Who do I tend to hang out with? Because we do tend to hang out with people who are just like us. Sure. Who can I invite in? So whether it's literally inviting some people on your team who are different knowing they're going to bring a different uh, point of view, which is a good thing. Um, or um, what I say to folks, especially if there's any holidays coming up, like Fourth of July or Thanksgiving or the holidays in December, if you're going to have gatherings at your home, invite some folks you haven't invited before to get to know them. Now, make sure you don't invite just one person. <laughs> right. Because everybody will be focused just on that one person. But be willing to expand your universe so that you get to know people different than you and they get to be comfortable with you as well. And then the C stands for check your ego at the door. This is the hard one, especially the older you are and the higher up you are in the organization because your decisions got you to where you are. So you're a success having made these past decisions. I'm not saying don't continue to make great decisions, but realize that sometimes your decisions are just based on your own ego and you want to check that. For example, in almost every organization I work with, they have a favorite university where they recruit uh, new hires. Okay. That university is either the same university, the CEO, the president, the VP, whoever the highest person is, it's either the same university that person went to or they've decided if they're going to hire engineers, for instance, they only can go to Stanford and MIT, when there are many other uh, universities that have excellent programs, but they only go to a certain place. Why? Because my ego says, because I went to University of Michigan, so I'll just put it out there, and I, when I was in HR, I was director of HR before I started doing all this work, I suspect that I probably put some resumes at the top of the list when I saw that person went to University of Michigan. This is, of course, way before I knew anything about bias. Because my assumption is, well, if you went to Michigan, you must be smart, just like me. Well, and of course. <laughs> of course. And the fact of the matter is, if we're really after best talent, best talent comes in all kinds of packages. They've had all kinds of backgrounds. And they've gone to many different schools. So be willing to check your ego at the door. Now, for my clients that really take this be basic to heart, they spend time talking about each one of those and really diving deep. What are some of the things we currently do that don't support that? And what can we do differently? Sure. And especially what could we uh, model as leaders differently?